What's up, Frigate Chasers? In this video, we are doing a walkthrough slash tour of the Sea Hunt Game Fish 27. At the time of filming this video, we did not know that 2020 would be so cruel, and we may be selling the boat soon. We will keep you updated in a pinned comment below, so feel free to check back often for a status update. And here's your host, Captain Green Jeans. All right, guys, welcome to uh, Frigate Chaser. This is our 2016 Sea Hunt Gamefish 27. She's 27 foot 2 inches long, has a 9 foot 4 inch beam, powered by twin 200 Yamaha four strokes. Um, not sure if it's still this way, but when we bought ours, you can get it with either the 150s, the 200s, or 250s. Uh, my buddy and I that I own it with, we were debating back and forth on do we need to go upgrade from the 150s to 200s or get twin 12 inch Simrads. And since the debate was so fiery, we decided to do what any smart boater would do and we got both. Um, <laughs> so it's got a 21 inch uh, draft. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit deep, but uh, it's an offshore boat. Uh, she handles water really well. Uh, we've been out in some pretty big waves. You don't get a lot of slamming, especially if you learn your trim tabs and learn how to trim properly. Um, up front, we have a Lumar windlass. Uh, keep 300 feet. We use eight plate rope, um, which we feel good about. We actually got rid of the original anchor that came on it and went with this Rockna. It's got the self riding arm, a little bit steeper pitch on the uh, plow. This thing sets in about two feet. And once it's set, you don't have to worry about dragging. Every boat I have in the future will definitely have a Rockna on it. You know, you pick your brand, there's Manta, there's other ones that have the same thing. All right, now we are actually aboard Frigate Chaser. Um, just a quick run through on the boat. I can't remember how big it is, but pretty large fish box here. Goes real deep. We put, uh, use our bait and chow and all that stuff in it. And we will put some fish in the occasion. A lot of times we bring a uh, cooler. It's insulated. A little bit of a complaint, it's not as insulated as I'd like it to be. I think it's a 35 or 40 gallon live well back here, which is great. We actually have twin live wells. There's another one here, which I'm pretty sure is a 40 gallon. When you buy the boat, the standard offering for the 27 foot game fish is what they call mezzanine seating. It has a seat right here and some rod holders and you actually can lift the seat up and it's got the live well there. But the problem we didn't like about it was that it comes back to about right here. So you have about this much space of your actual, actual cockpits worth uh, using. One great thing about Sea Hunt, you can change out to this is the, uh, the helm for the 25 game fish. They can change that out for you at no cost. So that's what we did. We were really happy with it. You know, we have a, a good sized cockpit. We can put our Yetis back here, still have usable fishing space. On the days we go out trolling, we just slide the Yeti forward. So someone can sit back, still have that mezzanine seat to watch your lines. Goes really well. So we upgraded our raw water line. We used to have one that was one of those expanding ones that we keep in this little storage box right here. Worked great, stayed out of the way. But the problem was it wasn't powerful enough that you know your raw water, you need that pressure. So we ended up getting away from that and we got this one so that it's, it doesn't expand. So there's always good pressure. And you know, if you're not familiar with your raw water, if you're new to this or something like that, definitely go here from the start. It's gonna save you a lot of headache and time. So this one I can't remember. I think it's either 25 or 50 feet. It's definitely long enough to do the whole boat. It uh, stretches out and what's cool about it is it literally just takes its shape back. You just walk back and you set it in there and it stores away that quick. We keep both a gaff and a fish brush or a deck brush on the boat at all times. Definitely got to have both of those uh, especially because we spend 90 plus percent of our time offshore. Maybe a little tarpon fishing here and there but we're not inshore guys. Dive door, which is great. We don't use it a lot for loading stuff because we're we're old, but we're not that old. But it is good for when we go diving to flip that up. You got to come in, throw some of your gear in, swim around, pull the ladder out, and just get in the boat. It makes it very convenient. It's very nice to have. Moving around the uh, port side, we have a box here. It's got plier holders. We usually keep some of uh, our, our go-to like sabikis and a couple random things that we go to on a regular basis, but on our everyday use thing. Freshwater wash down, hose pulls out. Works really well, it's a 19 gallon freshwater wash down. It does have a ceramic flushable head, uh, which is nice. You have to turn the freshwater on, but then it does flush and everything. We can pump that out, it's got a macerator, or you can actually uh, have it pumped out at the uh, dock. Up front, you can see we've got a couple of these orange boxes. Uh, one of them has all of our um, safety gear, such as your first aid kit, some of the stuff that we'd want to bring with us on our ditch bags, you can grab that very quickly. We have a uh, personal locator beacon that we bring with us. We also bring a spot messenger so that we can send messages to check in and things like that if we're running late. Stereo wise, so you saw the amps. I have two JL Audio M600 six channel amps in there. They're pushing two six and a half M series JL Audio speakers 
two 7.7 M-series JL audio speakers, two 8.8 M-series JL audio speakers, and two 10-inch M-series JL audio speakers. Moving up front, you've got a pretty good setup here. We want the forward seating. You can't actually get this with a coffin box. In hindsight, I kind of wish I'd got the coffin box because we don't usually bring enough people out to need all the forward seating. But on the other hand, we've actually camped on the boat a few times. And it was nice for Grant and I not to have to be sleeping, you know, snuggle up together. We could actually sleep separately. Uh, it does have a filler cushion or a filler plate and cushions that we could have put up here. We don't keep them up here a lot because we just don't use them. When the wife comes on board, she'll put a towel down. We do keep the backrest on for a number of reasons. One, they're comfortable when people are sitting up front. And two is we actually use them to help strap stuff down when we go on long trips like we're getting ready to do the dry tortugas and marathon. All right, so in the floor, we have a pretty good size fish box here. We keep stuff that we don't use as often, but it's still pretty handy to get to. Life jackets, we can yank them out in a second. Got my a cast net, a five gallon bucket. Every good boat needs a five gallon bucket on board. Up front, we got two more fish boxes. One, we keep all of our fenders, our stern anchor in here. They're pretty good size. They go pretty far forward, pretty far back. They both drain overboard. We do have filler plates that go in here, cushions that go around. And this one, you can see it's not super clean, but it's clean enough and it goes all the way up front, you know, to your arm. What I've learned over time is that these are insulated better than that rear fish box. More times than not, whenever we catch fish and we go and put them in a fish box, I'll put them up here instead of putting them back there. If you know, if we're not putting chum or bait back there, we're going on a big trip. Like a couple years ago, we went to Bimini and we just filled that up with ice and beer. Works very well. All the way forward, you have your anchor locker. The windlass works, but one thing I think is a little bit of a flaw in the design on this boat is they needed something to put pressure on the anchor road. So if you don't have enough wind, that windlass doesn't seem to want to pull in the anchor road because there's no pressure on it. And that windlass just slips. The other complaint I have is I really wish they had made the anchor locker deeper, which a lot of people will say, well, the boat shape is the boat shape. How do you do that? If they would have moved this back just a couple of inches and just shortened this thing just slightly. It never would have been noticeable from a comfort standpoint, but you would have gained a lot of space on the anchor road because what we've started doing over time is instead of even trying to put the entire anchor road in the anchor box, I think you'll probably see it right now. We have a quite a bit of line that we have sitting right here because it's just easier to pull that line in right there and then drop the anchor than it is to have to screw with trying to get that thing all the way up into the anchor road. I don't know if that's normal, if that's good or bad, but it's what we do and it works for us. And I mean, and honestly, especially when you're trying to get anchored up on a wreck or something like that, if you've got a little bit of wind, I think this thing drops somewhere in the range of about a, a foot per second. If you're really trying to get on a hard spot and get very close or very precise with where you're anchoring, it's hard for me to trust having a one foot, anchor, one foot per second drop. So we still throw the anchor quite a bit. It is power. So obviously you got your out and in here. There's also one at the helm, which is nice. You can, if you uh, happen to be out deep enough that you're gonna just drop it by hand, you can just push the button and drop it out, which is really great. So on the starboard side, you have two more fish boxes. Um, one is on this side, we keep line in it. So usually like, I have a bunch of them inside right now because we're getting ready to, we're getting prepped for our trip and trying to get rigged stuff, stuff rigged up. We keep usually our 15, 20s, our lighter weights that come in these smaller spools. We keep up here, all of your heavy weights, your 50s, 70s, 90s, any wire you have, we keep down here. I keep a crimper on board because for my get, uh, group of rigs, I do just prefer to crimp versus trying to tie. Plier, knife holder in here. This side, is enough for three Plano boxes. Again, they're in the house right now because we're getting set for the trip. Drawers down here, keep all of our, our lead. Uh, one trick that we figured out a couple years ago that we do consistently is any of our pinch weights. Just go buy one of those things, a bubble gum. Um, and then you can put, put your pinch weights in there, you open it up and they pull right out. Same with the bottom, we go lead bigger as it goes down. So you got big lead down there. Moving to the helm. So we've got a box up here. We keep our radio up here, um, which is nice. We only have one VHF radio and a lot of people like to carry two so they can run multiple channels. We don't do that. Um, like I said, we have a PLB, a messenger we can do for other things. So if we got in a bad spot, um, we could get out of it. It does have NMEI, which if you're not familiar with what that means, basically it's integrated into the uh, SIMRADs. If you get into a distress signal and you hit the emergency, it's gonna relay your GPS coordinates to the Coast Guard. And what's cool about this is even if you're out of range of yourself being able to radio to the Coast Guard, that MMEI will relay off any other boat that has the same technology until it gets back to the Coast Guard. So, you know, that's one safety stop we have on the boat. We have the personal locator beacon, we have the spot messenger. Of course, we keep life jackets in a ditch bag and all the stuff we need. We've got a 2,000 gallon per hour 
bilge pump. We have another 1,000 gallon per hour backup bilge pump. Uh, the thing is, a 27 foot boat is big enough to get you anywhere a bigger boat would be. You just have to watch the weather a little bit better. And be smart. As long as you're smart and you do what you need to do, uh, you're going to get to where you need to be. So we have twin Simrad NSS 12 Evo 2s on here. Uh, they do have the Evo 3 out now, which is pretty cool. Instead of the one with the JL Audio M100, that, uh, or MM100, whatever it's called, that a lot of people use for the rest of the JL Audio system, we went with the Fusion. A big fan of the Fusion system, works very well. It's actually integrated into the Simrad, so you can see your time to destination. Basically, you can put any other display on here that you want and move it over to the, uh, to the screen. If you're not familiar with the Simrads, you know, I don't want to get into a bait. Simrad, Garmin, Raymarine, B&G, whatever. Everyone's got their preference. We're big fans of Simrad. At the time of buying our boat, that's what Sea Hunt spec anyway. You could get it with Garmin, but you had to order it aftermarket. One thing I'll mention before we get into the rest of the electronics is you'll see all these sitting up here. And we're very excited about this trip. So we leave tomorrow for the dry tortugas. We're going to be out there from Tuesday until Saturday, weather permitting. Then we're going to go up to Marathon for a week. The guys over at Cool Lures, which are an up and coming uh, lure producer, sent us a number of both their current uh, lures and some of their prototypes to try out. I haven't had a single one in the water yet, but just looking at these things from a quality standpoint, I mean, these things are just some of the best quality lures I've seen. They've got good weight to them, the good shape to them, big variety of colors and sizes. So we're very excited to give these a try when we go out to the Dry Tortugas and, and Marathon. You know, a lot of the smaller ones, we, you know, we catch a lot of Mahi with these little four or six inches, whatever they are. You get some of these bigger chugs that you're gonna see for your Wahoo and, and your Marlin, stuff like that. So we're gonna give them a try and we're gonna see what happens. And uh, you know, we'll post more on those as we go along, but really excited about that. Really appreciative of those guys for sending us some stuff to try out. And I definitely suggest you check them out on both Facebook and Instagram because they've got pages for both. Um, so looking at the rest of our electronics, you know, one cool thing about pretty much any of these modern devices, you know, you can check your waypoints. You got your tides anytime you're at a certain spot you can see what the tide is we have a both a structure scan which lets you see from side to side up to a couple hundred feet on each side of the boat we have a chirp transducer which you know it's uh, if you're not familiar with chirp i think most people watching this probably are it's not like back in the old day where it would sing a, send a single signal down and go boom have it come back boom have it come back it sends multiple signals multiple frequencies all at one time so it's a constant thing so we can usually see what we're going over even at speed pretty well you can always upgrade to an even higher end uh, transducer if you want to go deeper or faster or anything like that but some of those transducers get a little bit spendy so we drew a line in the sand the other thing we upgraded to was Sirius XM Marine and this thing is awesome I mean it's hard to even you can see everything like right now we're we're anchored and we're at the at my house so you're probably not going to see some of it but you can turn on everything from wave height wind direction wave direction are there storms out there you can get forecasts you can see uh noah buoys you can see marine zones you can see sea surface temperature and for people like us who go way offshore a lot it's a great thing to have because you know again using this weekend as an example when you go out to the dry tortugas yeah the rangers put up the forecast every day but it's literally wind finder Here's what it's gonna look like for the day. We can go out and we can see it real time. And you can see it as far away as you wanna be. And you can see the clouds, you can see lightning. So they'll tell you there's lightning strikes in your area. You can see what the wind predictions are gonna be. So this thing really, if you're gonna spend a lot of time offshore, it's a little spendy. I think it was about some eight or $900 for the system and then getting it installed. And then, you know, you have to pay for the subscription. But if you truly spend a lot of time offshore and something that you wanna do a lot, it's worth the money. Like this is for us, like we can actually really see the weather coming in. It's gonna be great. You know, like this week we have to anchor the boat most likely out in the harbor and we're gonna be camping on the island. For me to be able to know what kind of weather's coming in within a couple hours, when the tides are gonna turn, all of that stuff so that we can know if we have to really worry about the boat. And if we have to come in a day earlier or so because we're gonna get some weather, we're not gonna get that from a daily one time a day wind finder report. So this is something that is a, a big lifesaver for us. The other thing we have is we did upgrade to get the, the track so that we can integrate all of our GPS and everything. We upgraded so that we can actually have the gauges. It's not gonna work right now because I don't have the boat on. Kind of a fun little thing. We keep them kind of, I look, make them kind of old school hot rod looking. You can put them digital, you can put them this, you can put them that. Uh, just kind of a fun thing if you wanna see your gauges and stuff like that. Yamaha, I think it's called the command link or digital link or something like that. It gives you all of your uh, engine uh, information. The modern technology for how these engines work is just astonishing. Like. If you get something pulled into the intake for like the water, anything like that, it'll automatically shut the engines off. I've had that happen a couple times and I'm like, what, you know, what just happened? Then once it gets stopped, the uh, clog clears out, it'll start right back up. 
these things have been just awesome. Like they're quiet. They're actually been days we went offshore and I'm like, oh, you know, I think the engines are still on and we have to turn them off. You hit the button, they start. Been really happy with them. So that's kind of the overview of here. Rod holders, we've got four up top, we've got four down below. We have two what are called kingfish holders. We live in uh, Tampa, so we don't spend a lot of time actually going out and trolling. So for me, it wasn't worth the money to spend two grand or so on like some taco grand slam outriggers. So when we go trolling, we run one off each kingfish holder because we use, I think there's six, six or seven foot trolling rods. So you know, you get an extra seven feet on each side. We'll run one off the transom here that just goes back uh, just past the prop wash. Then we'll put one up here. That's our shotgun that goes way out. And for us, four is plenty. We've caught a lot of good fish. We've had a lot of good fun. And right now, living where I do, is just not, doesn't make sense to have outriggers. If I were to move to Miami or the Keys or somewhere like that, one of the first things I would get is outriggers. We've also thought getting sea deck for the boat. I'm still torn on it. I've lot of, read a lot of things that say it really makes things hot um, and they're harder to clean than the deck. They sure look pretty. I would love to have it, but I will say one thing that's great about any of these non-skids, pressure washer and some deck cleaner, this thing will look back brand new over and over again. So we've been really happy. We bought the 27 foot boat because we wanted something big enough to take us where we need to go, but not so expensive to maintain that we couldn't go out as often as we wanted to. Uh, yeah, it can still be expensive. We have a 179 gallon tank on it. This week when we go, we'll take 179 gallons and then we'll probably take an extra 20 or 30 gallons so that we can, you don't have to worry about, you know, restricting ourselves when we're out there. And you know, when you're paying marina prices, that gets pretty expensive. We're gonna try to fuel up before we go at a gas station. I think you, I need to look again, but I think as long as you use uh, the mid grade or above, you can use th or standard ethanol based gas in these, especially for people like us. We use our boat so much that no gas sits in our tanks too long. So that's kind of the general thing. I mean, we love the boat. We've had a lot of time with it. I use the boat a lot. I mean, it's only four years old. And I've got almost 650 hours on it. Uh, I guess lots of relative term. I'm not, a, I'm not a charter captain, but we're happy with it. Um, when we've gone camping, there've been times we've slept in the gunnels here. We've slept up front. We've spent multiple days on it. We do actually have a gas grill that goes in the rod holders. We don't tend to bring it because usually when we're on these longer trips, you know, space is a hot commodity and we just don't feel sometimes it's worth it unless you don't have, unless you're not bringing a bunch of other stuff. So that's the rundown on, on Frigate Chaser. Love to hear if you guys have any thoughts on it. If you have any suggestions, I know there's always it's always a hot conversation when people talk, start talking about boat brands or their preferences, or their favorites. Not looking for a debate, just if you have suggestions or smart thoughts or dumb thoughts or anything you want to share, just let us know. Thanks for watching, guys.